So a couple years ago, I was walking out of one of my classes when I ran into my teacher. He stopped me and said, Gabby, are you okay? Now, I was confused because as far as I knew, I was fine. So I replied, yes, why? He then said, it looks like you've got a black eye. Now, I can remember this day like it was yesterday, and I can still play the series of events in my head to this day. The truth is, my teacher meant no ill will when he asked me if I'd gotten punched in the face. He just didn't know that that was my birthmark that he was referring to, not a black eye. Now, growing up as a child, I was very introverted, and I believe that my birthmark was the source of most of my insecurities. When I was preteen, I would oftentimes dress in darker colors, as to not draw too much attention to myself. And as I got older, I began to experiment with makeup. Now, it was all great for a while, until it suddenly became a mask, which I hid beneath. When I was with family, I felt the most comfortable. However, when I was out with strangers, that is when my insecurities came. I started to deprive myself of opportunities for fear of what people think of, would think of me. My birthmark was not just a thought anymore, it had become an obsession. Now, I've always been interested in birthmarks, but I've never really known why some people have them and why others don't. A fact is that everyone here is born with marks on their bodies, some different sizes and some located in different places. One of the main types of birthmarks are called vascular birthmarks, and they occur when blood vessels do not form properly in the skin. Another type is the type that I have, which is a pigmented birthmark. This occurs when there's a cell overgrowth in a certain area. Now, taking a break from the science side, let's look a little bit into the mythical side. It is said that birthmarks can determine how someone died in a past life. Now, people with no birthmarks are said to have died of natural causes. However, if you ask me, that's a little bit boring. So, depending on the size, color, and shape of your birthmark, this can determine how you died in your past life. I like to think that I died from a fire. Speaking of fires, when I was in the fifth grade, my friends would come up to me and they would say, Gabby, what happened? Did you get that from a fire? And I would say, I had to go back to save the baby. Oh. Now, <laughs> that ten year me would never run back into a burning house for a baby. I was going back for my Percy Jackson series. I digress. I say all of this to say that birthmarks are luck of the draw. As we know, birthmarks are not hereditary, meaning they're not passed down, so literally anyone can be born with a birthmark. My question is, why do we place such significance on such insignificant things? It's like critiquing the arm or the leg or the eye that you were born with. We have no say in the matter, so why do we live to nit nitpick every little thing about ourselves? Now, earlier I mentioned that my birthmark had become my obsession. Someone could be dangling off the edge of a cliff and I would be thinking, but my birthmark! <laughs> now, I know it sounds ridiculous, but I have reason. As females, we are put under so much pressure and we have so much to mentally juggle. It can feel like if we have a scar or an imperfection that we're not beautiful, smart, or worthy enough, that is the farthest from the truth. And we live in a day and age of social media. On Instagram, we're surrounded by beautiful girls and starting to compare ourselves to them, us starting to compare ourselves to them can make us feel like the smallest of the small. Black girls want to bleach, white girls want to tan. Curly hair wants straight hair, and straight hair wants curly. Tall girls want to be shorter, and shorter girls want to be taller. We are never, ever satisfied, and we will never, ever be satisfied. Now, I know that it doesn't mean a lot for me to come up here and tell you to love yourselves. Because the truth is, it's not fair for me to preach what I still, to this day, cannot fully practice. Yes, there are days when I want to wallow in my room and cry about not feeling pretty enough, but how productive is this? I challenge not just girls, but guys, to count on all fingers all the things that you find beautiful about yourself. I remember when I was younger, I used to keep a jar, and in that jar I'd write down all the compliments I received. Now, these compliments, they don't have to be physical. They could be things like, 
you're an amazing artist, or you've got a beautiful voice, or you're an amazing hockey player, you can make it to the NHL one day. Because once we start to take the attention off of physical beauty, and we start to commend ourselves on our actions, talents, and character, that is when we'll find true beauty. Now, my birthmark and I, we've come a long way. And I can proudly stand in the mirror and say, Gabby, you are only single because you want to be single. <laughs> now, in the words of Buma Muhammad, if the whole world was blind, how many people would you impress? Thank you.